audition. It's a Michael Kors audition for their sports, like their sneaker footwear. So um, I'm just wearing athletic wear today. I'm gonna change into my sneakers, but um, yeah, I'm excited, but kind of like, I'm not gonna book this because I don't know I feel like my agent keeps sending me to jobs that are like high fashion and they want like stick figures and I do print I'm like real people type of modeling so we'll see how it goes um, but yeah I'm running a little bit late so hopefully um, they'll still let me in by the time I get there take my socks off why didn't my agent tell me I thought I was gonna be trying on fucking sneakers <laughs> but um they had me take my socks off and my toenails are disgusting um oh crap okay right. you guys I forgot to mention that they specifically need a shoe size 6 foot and I am a size 6 so <sighs> <laughs> Like it snowed last night. Crazy! I wish we got more. <laughs> I love snow by the way, if you didn't know that. My husband and my parents both got a lot of snow and they live in the south. So what the hell? I moved here for the snow and it never snows. <laughs> sent their employee and first of all he was a dumbass because like he couldn't even find where we lived and I kept saying the buildings are numbered just go to 854 and he like could not find us and he was like um are you on the side of bling I was like no I'm on the other side I kept saying there are numbers on the building and when he finally like was close by I had to like literally wave him down and he was like um yeah I saw 855 and I got confused and I'm like does this grown man not know that there are odd numbers on one side of the street and even numbers on the other side like are you serious anyway so then I brought him up and he like looked around my room and under my bed and he actually couldn't find anything so I had to show him pictures to show him proof and so then he called the owner and he was like, there are definitely bed bugs here. And so then they quoted us. And um, that was a lot. It was, it was the amount that they quoted us was a lot more than I expected. So I was like, let me just talk to my roommates about it. You know, let us shop around and see if that's a good price. Um, and honestly, I was most likely going to hire this company. I just needed time to like make sure that this was a good price and so then the employee calls his boss on the phone 
wait he's already on the phone because he quoted us the price and so then I was like um, telling the guy we need we just need some time to think about it and so then um, and so then the owner like puts me on the phone and he's like trying to tell us like this is a really good price um, but in a way that was really belittling us and like kind of saying that he was talking to me as if I was stupid to not take this price and I was like sir this is the first time I've ever experienced this and I just want to make sure that I'm like doing the right thing um let me just talk to my roommates about it and he just like went on and on he was like if uh I'm a businessman if you're in my shoes and you get like a phone call about a two-bedroom in Manhattan for 2500 and you got this four bedroom in Brooklyn for 1300 like which one are you gonna take and I'm like dude I'm not you like I don't care um, <laughs> this has nothing to do with me if you don't want to take our business then don't take our business but like I need time to think about this so he just went off he was very extremely rude and I was like you know what we're good and <laughs> The employee was just like, he was like stuck in the middle and he didn't know what to do. He was already stupid. So, I don't know, he just like, he was like listening to us, like trying to kick him out and then listening to his boss on the phone, like trying to still talk to me. <laughs> and so then, because we were like, we're good, just leave. Um, then the owner was like, well, um, I have to charge you a $95 inspection fee and I was like sir we never discussed that I'm not paying that like I have no recollection recollection of him saying that it was gonna be a $95 inspection fee if we didn't book him and he it was just so hostile and he was like it was crazy <laughs> and because he didn't have my information my credit card information like he couldn't charge us like what was he gonna do so then he was like fine I'll waive it I was like you have to because this was never an agreement anyways he finally left and I was just like I was just like so like offended and like what just happened I was just trying to get like a bed bug company in here and instead we got like bitched at <laughs> And we were back to square one because we still have bed bugs and we need someone to like take care of it. So, like a person of the 21st century, are we in the 21st century? Yes, okay. Like a person of the 21st century, I wrote a review online because they had a five star review online and I thought like they have to be exceptional they have to be an amazing and professional business and they're not and so I wrote my experience it wasn't anything like like I said exactly what happened um it wasn't like it wasn't mean or hateful I just said hey this guy was rude and unprofessional and yeah and so then um all, all the while this is happening, I just told my other roommates, can you guys handle this? Can you, um, it's someone else's turn to call a company um, because I, I did a lot and I did my part. <laughs> this is someone else's call. So my roommate, Annie, she found another company and they, they came and sprayed the place on Friday and I haven't been bit since. So that's good. Um, and they were a little bit cheaper. They were like $200 cheaper, like $1,100. And um, it's a law that a New York City landlord has to pay for like extermination. Um, and our landlord, like, <laughs> he was bitching, of course. And he, we ended up only taking $500 from him. What the heck? That was really weird. That was really weird. The video just stopped. That's really weird. I hope this is all being recorded. <laughs> Anyways, so where was I? So it's the New York City law that your landlord has to pay for it. 
um, he was like, fine, I'll give you guys 500 since I like you so much. And so we were like, he should be paying for all of it. But at the same time, I was getting bit every night, like in on my face. So I was like, I don't care at this point. Let's just like take the 500 um, because I'm desperate. So that's what happened with that. Um, but eventually the first company I reached out to, they saw my review and they were blowing up my phone, like blowing it up, like e emails, text messages, phone calls. I immediately was like deleting all of it because it was like harassment at that point. I was like, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. And like, I got a glimpse of the text message from the guy and he was like, why are you doing this to my company? And I was like thinking in my head, I didn't do this to you. If you weren't such a jackass, this would have never happened. So I was ignoring it. Um, they kept like, and then I saw later on, I saw an email that they sent. They were like, maybe we can work something out because he owns the company with his wife. And I was like, it's not his wife's fault that he's stupid and he's a man. <laughs> um, I was like, maybe I should like try to work things out like for her sake. Um, and so then, and so then I was like, maybe, <clears throat> maybe maybe I can just like ask them for like $500 for my pain and suffering and then I'll take it down and so then I looked on in an email I was like let me finally just read what the last email said and they were offering me money and I was like well there you go and so I said apology accepted and the money accepted so um the whole weekend i was trying to get the review taken down it was i had some difficulty but eventually i think it's fixed it doesn't matter they pay me and i'm happy and it's crazy <laughs> all that whole experience was crazy and i'm like i can get used to like settlements like can someone else do something to me so i can get paid <laughs> Anyways, that's what happened with the exterminator. Crazy. <laughs> um, okay, now the other thing I want to talk about. Um, YouTube hateful comments. Okay, it's particularly on the video of my husband's DNA ancestry. I knew that was going to get a lot of hits. And when you get random people coming to your channel, they think they can just say anything. And first of all, I, I don't understand how people can be so mean and so hateful. And I don't care if it's on the internet or in person. Like, it's wrong and you should not do it. It's one thing to state your opinion that may be in opposition, but you're, you can still be a human being and still be respectful. Um, but anyways, um, so I started getting some negative comments on there, mostly about like, Oh, ancestry DNA is a scam, blah blah blah. blah. I was like, whatever, I don't care. Um, and then people were like, particularly coming at me and saying, What, what did he say? He said something like, This girl wants to prove that he's Middle Eastern, she wants to prove that he's mixed so bad because she wants mixed babies and she, just anything but black. And I'm just like, what? You don't even know me. Like, what? A what? <laughs> I was like, this re this comment does not even, it's not even worth my response or my energies. And that's exactly what I said in the reply. But I did want to say something because I want these people to know that there's a real person on the other side of this video who posted this. It's me and I have feelings and you need to know that I'm real. So then I was like, um, I'm not even gonna respond to this. And then I put like a peace sign. I said, there's so much hatred in that comment. I'm not even gonna respond. And like, I was not trying to prove that he's Middle Eastern. How would I even know that he's Middle Eastern? Of, of course, like I've always thought he had some mixture in him. Um, just, just by the way he looks. I know there are Africans that aren't the stereotypical 
dark skin with like 4C hair. I know Africans come <laughs> I know Africans come in all shapes and sizes and colors and whatever. But I'm like, hey, I don't know. There could be some mixture there. Um, and I was excited to see exactly his ethnic makeup. I don't care what he is. I love him no matter what. Um, and <laughs> for some random person to think that I have some type of self-hatred in that I need mixed babies or whatever. I, I love all people of all colors and... I, I don't I don't even know like I don't even know how to how to respond to this because of it's just so like I'm not that person. I'm proud to be African American and I'm proud to be my skin color. I'm proud. I'm proud. So like <laughs> it's it's just stupid. So that one was like you're stupid. You don't even know me. You're just spring, spreading hatred. And then there was another comment that really got to me. <clears throat> and the, the person said, I don't know. <laughs> the person ultimately said like, the person said, why did you marry this black American? Sorry, I just got like a brain. He said, why did he or why did you marry this black American? And let's address this, okay? Because I know, I know there are a lot of Ethiopians who do not like African Americans. They do not respect African Americans. They hate African Americans. And I've never had to deal with that personally until now. And I just... That comment just hurt so bad because it made me feel like I cried. I literally cried. And later on, my period started. So I did realize I was being a little more hormonal than usual, but it still hurt. Like, even if my period wasn't coming, um, I think I still would have shed a tear or two. Because, like, he made me feel like I wasn't good enough for being him. He made me feel like being African-American was, like, the lowest of the low. And African Americans, like, we've been through so much and we still are. Like, I just don't understand why we're hated so much. I don't understand. Like, I'm like, what did we ever do to receive so much hate? <laughs> and what I couldn't figure out is that, okay, I'm used to racism from white people, but from other people who look like me who are my same skin color I'm like I don't understand if anything we should be uniting and pulling together but because you feel like I don't know like you're better than African Americans for whatever reason you're wrong like no one is better than another person just because of their skin color or their nationality or their language or anything and it's just I just I don't understand and it made me feel like shit because I think as an African American woman you know, I'm gonna start crying I don't want to cry again okay I don't want to mess up my makeup. Okay. As an African African American person, I feel like we, um, aside from what happened with slavery in our daily lives, we live with racism, and like it's something that we just wear on our shoulders, and it's not anything that's like. Um, it's just something that we live with so we we like go on with our oh my god what happened to my hair <laughs> we go about our lives as normal as possible knowing that you know 
I may not, I don't know, I'm gonna have this struggle or someone's gonna follow me around the store or someone may not like me because I'm African American. It's just something that we live with. But when it's like, you're reminded so blatantly and so like in your face racism it's like it sucks and it's like oh my god I'm messing up my makeup there's nothing you can do and there's nothing that you did do. Anyways, so oh, I can't believe I'm crying again. Anyways, I know like it's all like I know like it has nothing to do with me in that I'm beautiful inside and out and that no one is better than me because of you know and I, I know that racism, how it is, and like how people use it to divide and conquer, and it's, it's the man-made, it's man-made. We are literally the same. We are all the same. We're all related. You know what I mean? We're all human beings. And it's unfortunate that we still live in this barbaric world where we're still where we're still um, picking out the differences in us and saying, oh, well, this makes me better. I, I don't know. It's just stupid. Anyways, anyways, so when I'm feeling down like that, I just try to focus on the positive and the good people in my life. And I always, I'm just happy that we both come from families that are very accepting of us and that Beanie's family has always been accepting um, because I know some Ethiopian families, they completely cut that person off if they marry outside their culture. And not once did I feel that I've, it's always been love from day one. As it should. Anyway, so... Yeah, that is, that is my story of... That's my update on hateful YouTube comments and I'm not like I'm like how am I gonna deal with this as my channel grows because my channel is growing like I'm getting subscribers and I'm so happy and I'm thankful and I welcome all of you to my channel and my journey and I'm just I'm trying to figure out am I gonna try to ignore the hateful comments going forward am I gonna like respond am I gonna delete them because I did delete that one I was like, this is not going to be on my channel. I'm not going to tolerate that kind of hatred. I don't know. We'll see as we go. But I just, I want to spread love and positivity on this channel. And I don't care if it is the internet. You're not allowed to say those things. You're not allowed to be... You're not allowed to hurt people because you're hurt in some type of way. Anyway, so I'm going to go touch up my makeup and I have to go to an audition. It's for a pharmaceutical drug or something. It's for like lung disease. <laughs> Do I look like someone who would have lung disease? Um, I have to like tone down. I know I feel like like my top is a crop top. I usually like play the student. My when I audition is like from age sixteen to like twenty four, so I try to like dress youthful. But I feel like I'm doing a little too much today. Like I don't, I don't know what to do with this. Should I like just leave it like this? Should I put it back and like I don't know. We'll see. I kind of don't care anymore. <laughs> I mean, I do care. It's just when you've been in New York as long as I have and auditioning and like, it's hit or miss. You never know why you get a job or why you don't get a job. So I kind of just don't put too much energy into it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna close this out because I just ran out of space. 
um thank you so much for watching and look out for my next vlog i've been kind of doing like weekly vlogs um for january and i hope you like them so give this video a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed to my channel and i'll see you in my next vlog have a wonderful day